On today's video, we dive into what their own website refers to as the scariest motel in the United States. Before we go explore the motel, I should say, if you don't like clowns, uh, you might want to skip this one. We were already out here to drive the extraterrestrial highway, so we figured we might as well give it a try. I mean, how scary can it be? This, this picture's a little creepy. While we're both pretty skeptical about anything ghost related, we're always down for a good time and thought this might be a fun video to make and to share with you all. Alright, it's the moment of truth. We're going down to the cemetery with our device. 5.6, 5.8. Wait a second! <laughs> so let's jump into our 24 hours surviving the scariest motel in the United States. Our journey began with a six hour drive from Southern California all the way to the town of Tonopah. Be sure to check out our video on the International Car Forest, which is a great stop along the way. We arrived at the world famous Clown Motel just as the sun was setting. Hey everybody, I'm here with Pops. Today we're in Nevada at the place he is the most excited that we've ever been to. <laughs> the Clown Motel. <laughs> and I'll let you know in 24 hours whether you should come here or be scared to death. <laughs> it's supposed to be the scariest hotel in America. Let's go see. Look at this. <laughs> this isn't creepy at all. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm going to have to get a sticker that says, I survived the clown motel. Assuming oh, yeah, that I, I survived. You gotta be more excited now about the Clown Motel, right? I've never seen so much clown stuff in one place. <laughs> when you walk into the hotel lobby, you're immediately greeted with thousands of clowns on display. This definitely sets the mood for what you're gonna experience at the hotel. Alright, so if you're not a fan of clowns, you might not want to watch the rest of this video. <laughs> The hotel owner is the one who checked us in, and he told us that people send him clowns from all over the world, which is what's on display in front of you. He also told us that a movie studio was renting out the entire motel for the next week in order to film something here. There is a clown museum in the lobby with over 3,000 different types of clowns. They're missing a huge opportunity to have this motion activated as I think it would have been pretty terrifying if I walked by and it jumped out at me. In my opinion, this is the creepiest picture in here. <laughs> Looks like something the Joker would have drawn. This is a clown tree. After exploring the lobby for a little bit longer, we decided it was time to go check out our room. Our first impression was that this was going to be a very strange place to spend the night. All right, Pops, do the honors. Here we go. It's, uh, slightly creepy. This, this picture's a little creepy. And then we also have uh, Michael Myers up on the wall. Pops, are you taking the bed closer to the door or to Michael Myers? I always thought Michael Myers was dopey, so I'm happy to yeah? see him anywhere. You're not afraid of Michael Myers, all right. So if you're looking for a review that's not based on it being the scariest motel in the United States, I would say this is a uh, no frills motel, maybe more like an uh, updated slightly Motel 6. Very basic. <laughs> There's uh, someone who is tagged on the wall. There's some stains on the ground, but uh, it's going to be an adventure. That's what we're here for. Apparently the thing to do is to write your name on our wall, so there's a bunch of people who have written their name on our wall and they did a just a veiled attempt to cover it up. In case you're wondering, Tassels the Clown slept here and approved it. So far I think the scariest thing about our room is whatever this shower curtain is. <laughs> the other thing is this mirror seems really out of place. It's kind of like it doesn't belong here. That's pretty scary. <laughs> creepy mirror, creepy shower curtain, and uh, that guy up there is pretty creepy. So we explored the museum and the hotel room. We got an EMF reader to check for ghosts because apparently that's what you do when you're here. But we're gonna go get some dinner first before we head out there. Oh, also there's a cemetery that's right next to the hotel. Did we get anybody with that jump scare? Be sure to let us know in the comments. As you can no doubt tell, my dad and I are just being silly and having fun with this experience. 
This is the Tonopah Cemetery, which is from 1901 to 1911, and it is literally right next to the hotel, which is why the hotel gets its haunted status. Tonopah has a brewing company that is open, so this is our clown motel break. This place and the Mizpah Hotel restaurant were the only two places open in the town. We got the fried pickles and jalapeno and the combo plate, which has ribs, brisket, and pork. Looks pretty strong for a small town. Looking forward to it, it looks great. All right, Pops is going with the fried jalapeno. jalapeno. Both are yummy. Yeah? yeah. You jalapeno. love jalapenos too. I love jalapenos, it's got a nice burn. I would never have ordered this, but they recommended it, so I'm excited to give it a try. I would agree, it's a good small town spot if you're staying at the Clown Motel. Definitely come here for dinner. After dinner, we decided to stop at the other famous hotel in Tonopah, the Mizpah Hotel. While the Clown Motel claims to be one of the scariest in the United States, the Mizpah claims to be one of the most haunted. This hotel has been here for over a century, and it's a great place to stay if you're in the area or even to get a drink or some food. The lobby has a bank vault that you can go into which has lots of information on Tonopah's history and the hotel's history. We walked around for a little bit and learned about the lady in red who supposedly haunts the fifth floor of the hotel. We were in the first electric elevator on the west coast. It's a, a little interesting and I can see how this hotel has a haunted vibe. Yeah, this, little, <laughs> this is a little bit of a creepy elevator. <laughs> the fifth floor is supposed to be one of the haunted floors. Pops just stated that this is definitely the type of hotel that gives off a haunted vibe. <laughs> so this is another great option for staying if you're in this area. Just the fact that there's not a lot of light in here just really gives it that uh, spooky vibe. But we're headed back to the safe clown motel. So when you rent a room here, you can actually rent an EMF device to go ghost hunting. It was $35 for the day, so I actually bought one on Amazon for $19.99 before I came here. And apparently one of the things that people do when they're ghost hunting here is that they go into the cemetery to see if they get any readings. So I think we're going to try that a little bit later tonight, but I'm going to check out the room first. So just checking out the area it does not register any ghosts. But you come over here. Oh, and Pops is cooking his dinner. That registers a huge ghost right there. There's nothing in there! <laughs> so we know our device works when we go out and we go use it. Before we head out and do some ghost hunting, we figured we'd talk about horror movies. Neither Pops or I really watch any horror movies, but we figured we'd share our favorites. So what's your favorite horror movie? I think they're all so hokey, but the one that I love more than any is the original zombie movie. Night of the Living Dead. That one scared me a lot when I was a young kid. I actually requested to put on Shirley Temple so I didn't have to watch it anymore. It's true. <laughs> but for me, I think the one that I remember the most is Psycho. It was really cheesy, but back in the day when you're younger, it just scares you. You don't even want to take a shower because somebody's going to come get you. In terms of new horror movies, I really haven't seen any, but I do remember Cabin in the Woods being pretty good and unique. But let us know what your favorite horror movie is in the comments if you watch them. And then we're going to head out and do some ghost hunting, I guess. I have my own idea for ghost fighting. You put the do not disturb sign up and they will obey it. I'm, I'm sure it says that somewhere Scientifically on the proven. Somewhere on the internet. <laughs> Alright, it's the moment of truth. We're going down to the cemetery with our device. The cemetery is right over there. I don't know what a good reading is on this. It was 150 for the microwave, so I guess we'll see what we find. Pops, we're adding a new uh, thing to our resume, ghost hunters. Ghost hunting. <laughs> and you have to take a baseline before you go in. So our baseline looks like 0 0.09 or 0 .0, 1, 0 0.10, something like that. First Tonopah Cemetery. It's kind of creepy, there's like a, a flag flying over there, but it looks like movement. <laughs> We're getting a reading of about five. Five, and outside it was, what, one. So that's a jump, so we've got something here. 5.6, 5.8. You're getting a reading, 6.2. 6.2, 6 
7.7. That seems like a pretty high rating. 7.1, up to. I mean, you're also kind of pointing towards a telephone pole wire. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that means anything or not. 5.1, I'm pointing towards telephone right. wire right here. I'm sure if any of you guys actually do ghost hunting, you're probably laughing at us right now. No idea what we're doing. So far, we have not found any ghosts. I think the thing is, is this does work. When we pointed towards the telephone wires, it went off uh, like eight point something. But then just walking around inside here, away from the telephone pole, it's the same as the reading was outside of the cemetery. Spend another couple minutes walking around before we give up on the ghosts for tonight. You're saying to give up the ghost? Yeah, give up the ghost. <laughs> I wonder how many people who have explored here have not realized that the telephone pole gives off a, a signal. Or maybe they did in order <laughs> to make a point or something. It makes a, it makes a good video. <laughs> good video. Wait a second. There's ghosts in the telephone pole! <laughs> So I think we'll call that inconclusive, but I do think we should check the museum because you never know. <laughs> All right, here we go. Is that clown haunted? I don't think. So this guy is 100% haunted. Beep, 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 beep. He's haunted to me though. <laughs> I can confirm that I got no EMF readings in the museum. This so. place is not haunted as far as we can tell. Back to the room. Also, if anyone can tell us uh, why ghosts show up on EMF readers, we would definitely like to know. Alright, only one last thing to do. We're going to set up a time lapse for our sleep to make sure that we catch any ghosts or anything else that enters the room. Here's the unedited time lapse. Let me know if you see anything that we didn't. And of course we had to sleep with the light on. We were at the scariest motel in the United States. We have officially survived our night at the <laughs> We have officially survived. We officially survived our night at the clown motel. It was awesome, but pretty scary to spend the night with Josh. <laughs> Only one thing left to do before we end this video. Officially leaving the scariest motel in America. Last order of business was grabbing a magnet and a sticker showing we survived. <laughs> we had our weird occurrence at the Clown Motel. My hat is just sitting here in the handle of my car and I didn't put it there. And Pop said he didn't put it there. No, but it couldn't have been that he fell out last night in the dark when we were taking things out. And then someone put it in there for us. <laughs> what a hater you are. <laughs> That's it for our time at the Clown Motel. Pops, what'd you think? This is a fun spot. It's worth stopping by. It's a no frills motel, so know that going in. But if you have fun with it, you'll probably have a fun time. That's it for this video. We will see you on the next one.